Sometimes I wonder if there's a way to call a timeout. Sometimes I wonder if there's a way to kind of go through the exit in the arena of the, the things of God. Do you ever have that thought that maybe there's a way out? We're going to find out in the next verse as Jonah tries to call a timeout and leave the stadium. We're going to continue our deep dive Bible study into the book of Jonah. We are now at Jonah chapter 1, verse 3. As I said earlier, we're going to take one verse per episode. You have a chance to go along with us. If you decide you want to learn some Hebrew, you can get our Biblical Hebrew audio course, the first seven uh, lessons, absolutely free at bfainternational.com. Let's start Jonah chapter 1, verse 3. We're going to be using the JPS. Last episode, we used the NIV. The first episode, we used both. However, we've got the Hebrew right here just to make sure that they stay in line. Jonah, however, started out, that's where we're gonna to start, to flee to Tarshish from the Lord's service. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. He paid the fare and went aboard to sail with the others to Tarshish away from the service of the Lord. The Hebrew starts out with two really powerful uh, words, Vayikam Yonah. If you remember in the second episode, the father said, Kum lech. Vayikam is the same root. However, this time what we find is we could actually say, but Jonah arose, and at that point, it seems like we don't know what's going to happen. He got up. God said, get up. Jonah got up. However, it says, Yonah, Vayikam, Yonah did something. What did he do? Now, before we get to that, I want you to take a look at 1 Kings chapter 17, 9 and 10. The tale of two prophets, Jonah and Elijah. In fact, we find several times in the book of Jonah where there's a parallel with the prophet Elijah. That parallel isn't always doing the same thing, but you kind of get the same image. The father told Elijah, arise and go, kum lech, to Zarephath. And what did Elijah do? He arose and went to Zarephath. 1 Kings 17, 9 and 10. Jonah starts out matching the actions of Elijah linguistically until... <laughs> he does something radical. Vayikam, he got up, Yonah, and then he uses this word, live roach, to flee, and then the word Tarshisha. That's, uh, at the end of the word, it's actually a directive, hey, saying he's going to Tarshish. So, however, Jonah started out to flee to Tarshish. Now, we've got to stop. Take a little bit of a break. Go a little bit deeper into language history, and context of the word Tarshish that we find three times in this verse. If you find one word three times in a verse, you're supposed to slow down and take a closer look. Now, I actually went and got a map that can show some possibilities of where Tarshish is. One shows that possibly being uh, at the lower part of Spain. Another one, uh, somewhere at the, uh, the, the, the northern part of Africa. Wherever it was, it was the opposite direction <laughs> of where he was called to go. So let's take a look at this, this word, the meaning of the word Tarshish. A precious stone, perhaps yellow jasper or other gold-colored stone. Look in Exodus chapter 28, verse 20, and 39, verse 13. I want to take a look at Ezekiel chapter 27, verse 12, and read it to you right here. Tarshish was your customer because of the abundance of all kinds of wealth. With silver, iron, tin, and lead, they paid for your wares. I'd like to read another verse. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 9. Surely the coastlands will wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish will come first, to bring your sons from afar, their silver and their gold with them, for the name of Yehovah your God and for the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified you. Can I continue? Psalms 72, verse 10. Let kings of Tarshish and the islands pay tribute. Kings of Sheba and Seba offer gifts. 
Wherever Tarshish is located, it was considered far to the west, while Nineveh was considered far to the east. Jonah decided he was going to get up and he was going to go and he was going to flee the opposite way that the father was calling him. Let's go on. Here's the part that's really interesting. When it says he wanted to flee, there's a phrase that's added in Hebrew that is really, really gives us insight. It is the phrase, me lifne Yehovah, from the face or from before the face of yud heh vav Yehovah. So this is what Jonah was trying to do according to this verse. He wasn't just going on a trip the opposite way. He wanted to get away from the one who had just spoken to him. Let's take a look at, uh, I think we have Genesis chapter 4, verse 16. Yeah. Cain left the presence of Yehovah and settled in the land of Nod, east of Edom. Same sort of uh, idea. Now, there's, there's, a, there's a wonderful passage that I want to share uh, that I think is, is, is really appropriate for Jonah. I, I wish, I'm sure Jonah knew this, but I want to know if you know it. It's in Psalms chapter 139, verse 7 through 10, and I'm using the JPS. Here's what it says. Where can I escape from your spirit? Where can I flee? Live rock to flee as he's tried to flee. Where can I flee from your face, from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I descend to Sheol, you're there too. If I take wing with the dawn to come to rest on the western horizon, even there, your hand will be guiding me. Your right hand will be holding me fast. Jonah started to flee to Tarshish from the Lord's service. But where could he go, according to the JPS? It's this presence. It's who he is. He was, he was, he was saying, listen, whatever it is that you're calling me to right now, I don't want any part of that. In fact, I'm going to go exact opposite of what you're saying. He went someplace. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. It's on the, the, the coast of Israel, going the opposite way of where Nineveh was. And what did, what did he do? He says he went down to Joppa and he found a ship, which means he was looking. I can't wait to get to this next section. This is where this verse gets really fun for me. So what I want you to do is I want you to see if you got two, maybe you got two translations or one, but you slow down, go through again. You're gonna read the verse. Maybe you took a little bit of the Hebrew, but here's what we're gonna do is we're going to take a quick break and come back for the next section. We figured this thing out. All you got to do is subscribe. When you subscribe, there's something that happens behind the scenes that gets this information to even more people. So join us by subscribing. Like, comment, share. Let's keep on with this deep dive Bible study into the book of Jonah. Folks, we can slow down and take a look at the next part of this verse. It says he went down. Now, this is an image that for me, when I'm reading in my Hebrew Bible, when I see this word, vayered, uh, it, it, it's, it, it, it makes me think, okay, well, he's, 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 he's doing something. It's intentional there. We're going to see it later as we go through the verse, or as we go through the passage. He went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. Now, the, the question simply is this. How did he find the ship? I mean, I, <laughs> I mean this is just a question I ask. I mean, is there like a big board that says, hey, ship's going to Tarshish, 7 a.m., 12 p.m., I mean, it was that kind of thing? Or did he have to go and ask people, are there any ships that are going to Tarshish? Now, you might think that this isn't really important, but as we go through this book, this actually becomes really important because we're going to get an idea of what's in the heart of Jonah. Uh, the next thing is, well, so for example, uh, this is the image that I get. I get the image of him like finding like a, um, you know, maybe he goes to a tavern or he's on the shipyard and he says, hey, does, do you know anybody that's got a crew that's already going to Tarshish? I need to get on that ship. Maybe he found like a hand Solo type guy, you know, in, in Star Wars, a guy that says, I need to go to this, this faraway place. And, and, and I could hear him saying something like, you know, I heard you have a crew departing for Tarshish. And then here comes the question, how much for me to stow away? <laughs> now, where do I get this? Let's keep reading. He paid the fare, that's what it says in JPS. Now, uh, when it says that he paid the fare, I did something that I love to do. I wanna know where does this word fare show up in the Tanakh? So I start digging, I start looking. Certainly there's gotta be another place where the word fare is, you know, where you buy a ticket. Come to find out, this is the only place 
where some of the, uh, the grammars, et cetera, would say that this is where they're using the word fair. Actually, the word that he's using for fair is actually the word wage. The feminine possessive attached to the word sahara points toward the wage to hire <laughs> the ship. Examples. Wages of servants, Genesis 30, 28, 30, 32, 30, 33, Deuteronomy 15, 18, wages for soldiers, Ezra chapter 29, 18, 29, 19, uh, reward for work being done or, or faithfulness. I mean, there's, there's all this possibility. And then we get to this one little thing that says passage, money, or fair. Now I'm looking in what's called the Brown Driver Briggs and what it's talking about, uh, lexical uh, dictionary, I'm sorry. And what it's saying is there's only one example Jonah chapter one, verse three, where it actually is money. Now I'm actually <laughs> gonna argue that he's actually paying a wage. In other words, this is the cost for something. In fact, the grammatical structure of it is literally like he's paying its wage. What's the it? The it is the ship. So uh, I wanna tell you that it, that probably was pretty expensive. According to the Mishnah, Baba Batra 3.2, in Roman times, the journey to Spain, if that's where he went, if that's the Tarshish that he went to, could take a full year. Evidently, because of the need to restock provisions frequently at ports along the way, wait for favorable winds, and trade the cargo. I also would like to read 1 Kings 10.22. For the king had a Tarshish fleet on the sea, along with Hiram's fleet. Once every three years, the Tarshish fleet came in bearing gold and silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks. Once every three years. So maybe this was a long journey and maybe it was gonna take a long time. And so Jonah had to pay for the cost. Let's continue on. And he went aboard to sail with the others, the JPS says, to Tarshish, away from the service of the Lord. Again, the Meliphane, uh, Yehovah, from the presence, from, uh, they're, they're calling it the service. Now, here's what I'd like to do. When he says with the others, I also want to slow down. It's almost like Jonah's got this thing going on where he, you know, he decides I'm going to go away from the call. I'm going to go down to Joppa. I'm going to find a ship. I'm going to pay its wage and I'm going to go with the others. I mean, it, it, I mean he, he's obviously traveling with the ship's crew. Here's what I'd like to do right now. I want to take a look at what I call the Lost in Translation section. Can we go to my version? Here's what I see. But Jonah got up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of Yehovah. Then he went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. He then gave its price. Whose price? The price for the ship. And he went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of Yehovah. I get this image that Jonah's like, look, I know about Tarshish. I know how far it is. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find a ship, but I'm gonna see if I can find a ship. I would go so far as to say, as we go further, that he probably had a deal with the captain of the ship. Maybe it wasn't a public situation. Maybe it was private. Based on what we see, as we continue to go through, Jonah and this, this, this person, which the Hebrew does a really powerful thing and tells us more about him, but maybe it happened like this. Jonah found this guy. He says, listen, I've got to get away from this land. I've got to get out of this stadium. The father is doing something in this area and I want no parts of it. Where's the exit? Where's the timeout? I will pay whatever I need to pay to get out of here. Maybe he made that kind of deal. And when he made that kind of deal, the guy says, okay, I've got a crew that's already going. Here's what we do. I don't want you to interact with them. You go down to this section of the ship. And this is, gets really interesting. So Jonah goes down to that section of the ship. He hooks up with them. He gets on a different agenda. And there is actually what I would call five simple things that Jonah does that are uh, key. I call them uh, the five actions of Jonah. Now, before I share with you what I think those five actions are, I want you to do a little bit of homework. I want you to read this verse and ask yourself the question, can you find five things that Jonah does. I, I think they're actually pretty revelatory. These five things that he does, and it paints a clear picture that Jonah has an intent in his heart that's worked itself into action, that whatever the father said for him, he wants no part of it. 
we have been working behind the scenes with the best producer you can imagine. Our producer has been working to make this as, as understandable as possible with the graphics and all of that, but we need you to participate with us. Like, comment, share, subscribe, push the bell icon, and let's keep studying in the deep dive Bible study into the book of Jonah. Welcome back, my friends. I asked you to take a look at this verse to see if you can find these five things. Here's the other thing I wanted to tell you. I, 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 sometimes, as I mentioned, I get a little excited and go a little fast. Uh, in our Biblical Hebrew audio course, we've actually got an Israeli speaker that's actually proclaiming each of these words uh, in, in, in uh, I think, the perfect uh, <laughs> ability to speak it. You know, for myself, I understand what the words are and sometimes I might fumble a little bit, uh, but that's for you. Those that want to take advantage of that, we actually have an Israeli speaker that goes through and gives us uh, the translation, I'm sorry, the, the Hebrew um, in, in perfect Hebrew. Uh, but these five things, can we talk about what they are real quick? I found five. The first one, he got up to flee. That is an action. And you know, I wonder sometimes, I don't know about you, but I know of people, and there have been even times for myself where it just seems like what the Father sometimes asks for is, is, is just too much for me. And there's an attempt sometimes to want to get away, but there is, no, <laughs> there is no escape. The second thing he did is he found <laughs> a getaway vessel. I mean, I'm convinced. Jonah's down there, and maybe there's all these ships wherever, and he's looking for a specific ship. He's not just wanting to get on any ship. He's looking for a ship that's going to get him as far away as possible. And he found one. Third thing, he paid the money. How much did it cost? I mean, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, it, what, what kind of deal did he have to, to have this wage for the, I mean, I mean the, the captain could be like, listen, uh, you know, we don't take stowaways. We don't take people. And Jonah says, oh, yes, you do. No, 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 we don't. There's no, oh, yes, you do. There's no, I mean, in other words, Jonah was willing to pay whatever it would take to fulfill his desire to get away from the creator of the universe. Number four, he boarded the ship. Here's where the action becomes really, really serious. I mean, it's one thing to say, well, I'm not gonna do what God wants me to do. I'm gonna find a way out of it. I'm gonna pay the money. But to actually get on the ship, Jonah was serious. I find there's something else there as Jonah grabbed, a, uh, became a part of another agenda. Here the father told him this is the agenda and he decided to go with the crowd. Anybody hearing me on that? Do you ever find yourself in that situation where it just seems like what the Father's calling to me is calling me to do is so different uh, than, than everyone else around me? I, I'll tell you for myself, sometimes I feel uh, real lonely. When I wanna follow what he says in his word according to his time, his Torah, and, and his name, there's so many times where I just feel like I'm uh, you know, on my own. But when you're doing the will of God, it's better to be, the, as I like to say, the safest place to be is in the will of God. It was the will of God for Jonah to go and complete the task. Now he's outside the will of God. But he boarded the ship with those folks. And the fifth thing that he did is he set sail in the opposite direction of Nineveh, or Nineveh in Hebrew. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but I, I mean, it's, I, my heart begins to sink as I think about Jonah. I mean, can you imagine the amount of time, energy uh, that he's spending? He's going the opposite place. He's finding a ship. How long did that take? He's negotiating a wage. What was that? He gets on the agenda with these other people and he literally sets sail. Now, folks, I have uh, good news and I have bad news. The bad news first. Uh, there is no place to hide from Yehovah. Like I said, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The bad news, there's no place to hide from Yehovah, but I've got some really good news. I mean, this is like gospel news right here. I gotta slow down. Let me slow down to give you this, this really good news. Now, you got the first part. There's no place to hide. Good news, there's no place to hide from Yehovah. <laughs> That's good news. I mean, Keith, what are you talking about that's good news? Man, I mean, there is no place to hide from him. Wherever you want to go, whatever you want to do, there's some questions I want you to consider. You know, sometimes we throw Jonah under the bus and we say, Jonah, man, what a, what a, you know, I, I can't believe it. Why, why did this guy do this? Maybe, just maybe, Jonah knows that Assyria and Israel were in past conflicts. We talked about it a couple episodes before. 
and they were primed to be in future conflicts. What if Jonah, uh, kind of as a prophet, he had access to the counsel of God, Amos says, it. He, he, was, he, he hears, hears God's plan. What if Jonah knows, hey, this Assyria, this Nineveh, they're going to end up doing harm, and maybe Jonah thinks he can flee because uh, he doesn't want to be any part of that. If I were to give you a parallel, imagine Jonah uh, at the time of World War I. World War I happens, God comes to him and says, hey, go to Berlin, Germany, and he says, oh, no, I know World War II's coming. I'm not going. Is it possible that Jonah had a glimpse of what was happening? This is the amazing aspect of who God is and who we are when he decides to use us. Maybe that's the case with Jonah. Visit bfainternational.com today and join our online academy for free. You'll get immediate access to start watching all of Keith Johnson's latest programs, including the Time Will Tell series, Rediscovering God's Clock from Israel and Beyond, the Now is the Time miniseries, based in New York City and Washington, D.C., The Road to Reformation, a 10-step study for biblical reformation, the Open Door series, 18 hours of exciting teaching from a national speaking tour, His Hallowed Name, a series on God's name that was banned from TV. Also, hear directly from Keith Johnson through weekly personal blog updates. Why delay? Visit bfainternational.com right now. Then click the Enter the Academy button. Visit us today. Hey folks, I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. I really am enjoying this, but I see something really interesting taking place. It's like cause and effect. So first thing, uh, and, and, and the matter of Yehovah manifest to Jonah, son of Amittai. And, and, and then he gives the statement, hey, get up, go to Nineveh. Why? I'm going to tell you why, because there's evil there and it's gotten the, and then there's the effect. Uh, Jonah says, no, 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 <laughs> I want no part of it. What's the cause and the effect? He tells him what's going to happen. Jonah gets up and goes the opposite way. And then something is going to happen next, cause and effect. But this next thing that happened, I got to tell you, uh, if you've already peeked ahead, uh, in English, it doesn't really catch it the way it is in Hebrew. What I love about the Hebrew language, I like to say this. Uh, sometimes when I was reading my English Bible, I felt like I was like listening to the radio. And, and then I started looking at different translations, and it was like I started to uh, watch black and white TV. And then from there, I started to interact with some of the tools, and, and then it got to be color TV. But now when I'm reading this slowly, the Yehovah himself who spoke these words, it's as if I am watching HD TV in 3D. <laughs> The Hebrew Bible just gives me so many aspects, both the, uh, the pronunciation, the explanation, the translation, and the application. Now, I'm only still scratching the surface here because we've got limited time, but the good news is this. I'm giving you access to tools so that you can go deeper yourself, digging into the language, history, and context of the Hebrew Bible, learning the pronunciation and the explanation and the translation. And guess what? Some of you even have different application that you can share with us. But in all of it, we are going to keep studying. Shalom, Torah fans. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Tap the subscription button and the bell icon. And I promise to update weekly with in-depth biblical research. Be sure to download the new michaelrood.tv app for both mobile and home devices for even more commercial-free content.